Hello friends, welcome back to Spooktober. In today's video, we are going to be throwing it back to a classic movie monster, although I think the word monster is a little bit unjust, but whatever. Last year I made Pennywise, so this year I wanted to do someone a little more timeless, so we are going to be making Frankenstein's monster. As per usual, I've made myself a template and cut another little piece of cardstock so I don't dirty up my template with cake. I'll link the one that I used down below. I've stacked up two layers of green vanilla cake with a little bit of vanilla buttercream, and then I'm going to cut out my silhouette and just kind of jigsawing the pieces together until I have the full shape. Using my reference photo and my little paring knife, I'm just going to start carving away some of the pieces so that the head sits a little more forward. I want to define the chest and the shoulders, basically just rounding everything out and giving myself a little bit of a guide for when I'm sculpting later. I used my template to cut out where the eyes are going to be and because he has a big old bean, I added one more layer of cake to the forehead. Once I was happy with the shape, I crumb coated the whole thing with more of my vanilla buttercream and then just popped that in the fridge to chill for about 30 minutes. I've got some really pale green modeling chocolate that I'm covering the entire thing with, starting with the head, just smoothing it down and then trimming away the excess. I use my template to help me mark out where all of the main features are going to sit and then with more of that modeling chocolate, I'm just kind of getting a rough idea where everything is going to go, not worrying about it looking pretty at this point. I covered the chest with more of my modeling chocolate and then same thing, just use my hands to help me map out where everything's going to be. So now that I have this blueprint for myself, I'm going to go back in and start really redefining all of the features, adding a little bit of modeling chocolate, taking it away if I need to. It takes me about three to five passes over the whole cake before everything starts looking kind of cohesive and smooth. So once I was happy with how he was looking, I wanted to go in and add some texture. I used a bunch of different modeling tools for this, just adding some little lines. I also used this toothbrush I use just for cakes. If you find that your modeling chocolate is a little too firm and it's not really taking the texture that well, you can blast it with an air dryer for like 10 seconds. Don't be too crazy with it because it will melt it, but it just softens it a bit. I went in and did the exact same thing for the chest, although I did end up covering most of this because he has like a black trench coat and stuff. So this was kind of pointless and I wasn't mad about it at all when I was done. But you don't have to do all this if you don't want to, you can just kind of keep it smooth. The last thing I added was a little gash on his head and then I moved on to painting. I'm using airbrush colors, but you could also use just some food grade alcohol mixed with a little bit of food coloring gel. And this is one of those cakes where it kind of looks like butt until the very end. So I know this is a very strong green. It's more like the Hulk green than Frankenstein green. But you can see I ended up being a pretty light wash over the whole cake and then I'm going to start building up my layers. I want this color to seep into all the nooks and crannies and then I'm wiping it away so I get that nice depth, but it's way less intense. While that first layer dries, I'm going to start on the eyes. I used a mixture of blacks and browns and whites for the pupils, just concentrating those darker colors on the outer edge and around the pupil. And then for like the water line and in the inner corner, I just used a little bit of pink mixed with brown. 
I went back in with more of a mossy green and I'm gonna use this color in all the areas of the cake where it's gonna be a little bit darker. So the eye bags, under the nose, in all the lines of the face. Before I moved on and added any more detail, I'm adding some white fondant to my board and then I'm going to add the ears. Ears are like my kryptonite. I can never make them look the same or very accurate, but I did my best. I'm using some black fondant for the hair. It's pretty like thin and spindly. So I used some scraggly pieces and then just textured everything with my fondant tool and then went back in with my X-Acto knife and just cut into the fondant. I used more of that black fondant for the sweater. I just kind of poked in a little bit of a knitted design and added that collar. And then on either side, I added the black parts for the jacket. So now that he's all covered, I'm really gonna take my time going back in and shading him. I got in the ears all around the hollows of his cheeks, underneath his really heavy brow, just making sure that dark color is in all the spaces where there's gonna be a shadow. I used some white to hit all of the high points of his face, so the chin, the nose, the top of the brow, the cheekbones, and then the cords in his neck. I added a little bit of red in that gash. You could make this like more bloody if you want to, but I was happy with this. And then I took some black food coloring mixed with a little bit of green, and I'm gonna stipple that over the whole board. I added the collar on his jacket, and then I added the bolts on either side of his neck. I just used black fondant and then painted them silver. As a final step, I added two little pieces of white fondant in either eye for the catch lights. And then with some white food coloring, I just added some highlights to his hair as well as parts of his jacket, just so it didn't look so matte and drab. And this was the final result, my friends. I added some lightning to the board. You can jazz it up however you want, or you could leave it the way it is. I really hope that you enjoyed this cake. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.